what's happening right now in Gaza could not happen without the United States. The United States is the primary funder of this genocide. They are the primary armors. They provide most uh, of the weapons. One study showed that since 1950, the United States has provided over 80% of all of the weaponry that Israel uses. Uh, the United States just sent more weapons yesterday. It was released. So while the United States sometimes brags that they've sent some aid, for those of us that are from the United States, that aid means nothing. If you're still sending the bombs, it doesn't matter that you sent food or water. If you sent the aid that caused people to need the food or water, it's even deeper than that. The United States is not just funding it, is not just arming Israel. The United States is defending Israel at every step. Uh, Joe Biden, the American president, literally has said on multiple occasions, this was a quote, that there's no red line, that there's no line Israel could cross for him. So while sometimes you'll hear the U.S. say they want Israel to follow international law, when you say there's no red line, that means international laws don't matter. So without the United States, I don't think this ever would have happened. Israel knows that the United States government has its back. I'm inspired that millions of people in the United States, myself included, we don't approve, we're disgusted, we're marching, we're demonstrating, we're organizing, in part because we want people around the world to know that this government doesn't speak for us, that you know, I have to wake up every day and know that my tax dollars are funding something that I'm disgusted by. Not only that, the United States on multiple occasions has vetoed important resolutions in the UN. This morning at our opening session here at the Doha Forum, the Secretary General of the UN expressed his own frustration that he did something he had never done before. He filed really an emergency motion to confront Israel and the violence against Gazans before the UN Security Council. It was 13 votes for a ceasefire, and the United States was the lone vote against, and they vetoed it. Uh, people that might not understand, there are five nations that have permanent veto power, and the United States is basically holding the UN hostage. We believe the United States is committing war crimes with Israel. If Israel's committing war crimes, the U.S. is as well. So these are legal definitions. When we say that this is genocide, that's, that's not just an emotional statement we're making. Genocide is a actual thing. There's a legal definition for it. This meets that definition. I don't think that we can count on the United States government to do anything about this. It's going to require other governments to intervene, including governments in the region. I'm not saying that governments here need to intervene militarily. Maybe, if that's an option, if that's a decision they need to make. But there are many ways that they could respond by maybe blocking their airspace. Uh, one option might be to close the Suez Canal. I mean, there are many different ways that you could say, listen, as long as you are doing these crimes against Palestinians, here is how we will respond as nations in the region.